What's up, everybody? This is Ryan Muncy, your host of the House of Strength podcast, Stronger, Healthier, Happier. Um, I am really excited for today's episode. This is episode number five, and our guest today is Tom Langton, and uh, you're going to hear me refer to him as Big Tom quite a bit. We'll get to that in a minute, but Tom is, uh, where, how tall are you, Tom? Six, eight? Six, nine. Six, nine. Okay. Yep. Uh, Tom is an awesome dude, and um, I'll tell you a story about how we met in a few minutes, but um, Tom is the Director of Nutrition at Gabriel Fitness, and you guys are where in New Jersey? Berkeley Heights? Berkeley Heights, yep, just out about 20 miles uh, west of Manhattan. Okay, cool. Tom played college football. He's a Poliquin Biosignature Practitioner, Precision Nutrition Coach, and just an all-around really smart dude, really cool. This is going to be an awesome episode. So, Tom, thank you so much for coming on. Um, really Thanks for having me, man. Thanks for having me. Here. Appreciate it. Um, all right. So, like I said, um, I first met Tom, it was, it's been about two years ago. Um, we've got uh, some connections through gym owners and fitness health-related um, businesses. Um, like we said, Tom's the director of nutrition at Gabriel Fitness. How did you get into that, Tom? Tell us a little bit about you know your story, how you started doing what you're doing. Yeah, man. Uh, like you said, you know I was an athlete my whole life. Um, grew up, played pretty much every sport as a kid. Ended up playing college football. Um, uh, as a football player, especially I was an offensive lineman. You know, getting big and big as big as possible was essential. But basically, that was what all I was told was to lift weights and eat as much as I possibly could. So for five years in college, that was all good because we were you know, lifting weights and working out every single day. But I, I had some bad knee injuries. My career ended. I became a coach, an actual football coach. So I kept eating the same way that I did. And I, I ended up over 400 pounds at one point, bad knees, bad back. And I got to the point where I was like, I got to do something about this. This is awful. So I really just, it really just started with me, you know, researching on my own. How can I eat better? How can I work out without beating myself up? And that really spun into, you know, getting into, I really fell in love with it. And then Spun it with me. Uh, I went back and got my master's in exercise fizz, and, and that's how I ended up getting into the business. But it really started from myself. I was really my own first client. Yeah, I think that's, that's a common thread about among most people in the fitness industry is that something in your personal life has driven you to, you know, and that's different for all of us, but it's driven you to look for ways to be better, healthier, happier, whatever it is. And you, you just you kind of get so sucked into it and you see how it can change your life that you want to expose other people to that and help more people um, so you know what kind of things what kind of changes did you make in your lifestyle to go from over 400 pounds to where you are now yeah and I mean it, it, and as you as you go through that how has you know there, there are some things that you know you have weighed 400 pounds you know what that's like mm -hmm. to sit on an airplane or, or you know be viewed in public at that size that, you know, somebody like myself who, who has never experienced that, you can relate to clients in, in ways that other coaches can't. Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing was to dispel a lot of the rumors because, you know, I mean, almost the information that's out there, if you're outside of the fitness industry, is like the biggest loser and, you know, all this stuff you see on TV, which, you know, they're helping a lot of people, but is the information the best? And so I was eating like most Americans eat, you know, cereal for breakfast fast food for lunch and then whatever crap for dinner. And in my mind, it was like, I just have to eat less of that to get healthy. And that just wasn't working. So I had to dig a little deeper and started realizing, you know, learning about nutrient density, learning about, you know, there's better foods to eat that you can eat as much as you want, as long as you're eating clean foods, learning how to cook for myself. That was a big thing. You know, growing up, I had two parents growing up. I was in, you know, my parents cooked for me. In college, all my meals were prepped for me. All of a sudden I was out of college. I had no, I literally couldn't even make an egg, dude. Like I had no idea how to cook. I could make pasta or like ramen noodles. So learning how to cook was a huge step. And it was like watching the food network and just learning basic cooking techniques. That was probably where I started. Learning how to cook an egg. Learning That's how so to funny, make funny, man. I, I can remember uh, when I lived in New York and, and when I was in college and first getting into this, I used to do the same thing. I had a notebook. I've even written a blog post about it where I had a notebook. I would watch Food Network, learn how to cook. I'd write their recipe and then I would change it and make it healthier. So a version that I would use and eat. Exactly the same thing. And for me, it was like, uh, what's your name? Rachel Ray? Yeah. She has like 30 minute meals. So exactly. I would just turn everything into like turkey burger instead of hamburger and like try to substitute good stuff in. Because for me, it's not about being a chef. Like I have buddies 
that are like gourmet chefs in Manhattan and they can cook stuff I can never even dream of. Right. But most people can't do that. They don't have the tools, they don't have the time. So for me, it's like, how can I do something really, really efficiently, but still be healthy? Right. So that's kind of, that was my start was learning how to cook. I can't tell you how much that helped me. And I remember, I think I was coaching football at the time and I said, I'm going to go 30 days and just cook every meal for myself and not eat out once. And I think I dropped like 25 pounds or 30 pounds in a month. And I was like, wow, like that, that's all it takes. Even yeah. if you, even if you don't know what to eat, just cook your own meals. And that, that was really the first step for me. Yeah, just simply taking that into your own hands, you're going to learn a lot more about what goes into your body. You're going to be much more aware. You're going to eliminate so many you know, chemicals and, and all the stuff that, that goes into foods at restaurants. You know, uh, that's, a, that's a great tip. So for anybody out there, you know, go 30 days without eating out. Control and cook and prepare everything that goes into your body for the next 30 days and watch how your awareness and your, your body changes. And you think about it, I mean, people, I, I wasn't very active at the time, but you got to be on your feet now. So like, it's something stupid like that, but you're now an extra hour a day that you're moving around the kitchen. You're not sitting on the couch waiting for delivery guy to come, or you're not sitting in your car eating drive through You're actually moving your butt around the kitchen. I mean, it sounds stupid, but that's a little bit of extra activity, a little more, you know, that's, it's, that all adds up over time. Yeah, so. th that's really cool. Um, so at what point in, in that process did you go through um, Precision Nutrition and the BioSig with Polyclin? Okay, so, so my, my, as the story went on, I, got, I lost a bunch of weight. Um, I realized I had to make a decision, like, did I want to coach football? Did I want to do something else? So I realized that, you know, I wanted to be a coach, but I thought the strength and conditioning route was a much better route for me. So that's when I went back to school, um, to, you know, in a master's program. And during the master's program, that's when I met Vince Gabriel, who hired me at Gabriel Fitness. And so I really started it um, six years ago now is when I started working for him. And I started out just as a strength coach, just working with athletes, working with, you know, the adult population on fat loss, but very quickly realized that I can only do so much as a trainer without the nutritional aspect of it. So, you know, people were coming to me like they weren't getting the results they wanted, and I, I couldn't figure it out why. And then, you know, the nutrition aspect came in. And so I slowly just started talking to people about food. And then I kind of became like the nutrition guy at the gym just because I was reading about it and talking about it. So then right. Vince, Vince was like, well, listen, if you're going to do this, you got to step up. You have to really be educated. So he was willing to send me out everywhere I wanted to go if I was going to take that role as kind of director of nutrition. So, you know, sent me to Rhode Island for the, for the biosignature. I did that like three and a half years ago. Um, took, studied for the precision nutrition and then just kind of like, have reached out to anybody I can to talk to about this stuff. So it was really starting as a strength coach and then figuring out I'm not getting what I want because I can only work with people three hours. I mean, I'm sure you know what it's like. You get people three hours a week. There's only so much. You can be the best trainer in the world. Right. You can only do so much if they're not eating the right thing. So Yeah, that, I was thinking exactly that as you were speaking. I mean, best, best case scenario, we see people three to five hours a week and they're still 160 some hours in a week. and. You know, if, if you're not eating right those other hours, you know, I don't have to tell you, we're all on the same page with that, that what you eat, what you put into your body, um, you know, will determine what your cells are made up of. And, you know, that's, if you're messing that up, you, you, you can't put crap in and expect to get diamonds out or, you know. No, do no doubt about it. No doubt about it. I mean, um, that's, go ahead, I'm sorry. Oh, I'll, well, you know, just for people who are listening that, that don't know what uh, biosignature is, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it, my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, and, and we'll go into this a little bit more. Um, so Charles Poliquin is, is one of the greatest minds in the strength industry. Um, and, and basically, biosignature is the theory that uh, based upon a 12-site skin fold test that you're going to look for the outlier. So, you know, if, if we measure 12 sites and 10 of them are all at 10 millimeter measurements and then you've got one at 6 and one at 20 millimeters, then that thickest spot, the outlier, is the one that you're going to focus on. So, so essentially, the spot where your body holds the most fat gives us insight into a hormonal imbalance. You exactly. guys are going to use that information as a biosig practitioner to help that particular client address that hormonal imbalance. Yeah. I, I mean, you said, I could have said it better myself, man. That's exactly, it's, it's basically a test, you know, it's a test to see, you know, your body fat percentage, your lean body mass, all that stuff you can get from any other body fat test. But the, the other thing it does, it shows you, and here's the thing, you can look at most people and get an idea of where they're storing most of their fat. But once you kind of learn the system, then you can realize better ways to kind of mitigate, you know, what, what do you do with that person? 
is you put 10 fitness professionals in a room and you say, everybody make a list of the top 20 ways to lose fat. We can get 200 ways for people to lose fat and they all work. But how many of those are people actually going to do? Do you know what I mean? Right. You can't overload people with information. So what this does for us is it kind of narrows our focus down and we say like, all right, so if cortisol is your main issue, we can say, here's the main things that you need to do. You need to clean up your sleep. We need to de-stress, whatever the case may be, but allows us to say, here's the one thing that's going to, you know, hammer, we got to hammer the most that's going to help you more than anything else. And, and, and that'll affect the rest of the body. It's not like you won't lose body fat at other sites or anything like that, but the, fixing those key ones will kind of have that cascade effect on the rest of the body. So it just, for us, it narrows our focus down. It, it, it kind of helps you find where you're going to get the most return for that particular person's yeah, the least, you know, energies the, the, and investments. Hey, man, let's, I mean, let's be realistic. I mean, it depends who you're working with. So, you know, if we're working with an elite athlete, we can give them 20 things and say, you know, like we're training a kid for the NFL right now. They just trying to, and we're, we got to say to him, like, look, here's 20 things you have to do every day. And if you don't do these, you're not going to play. So he does them. But if I have a guy who works on Wall Street, who, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't have that kind of time. Right. He can't focus on his body that much. He's working 16 hours a day on a desk. So I got to say, here's the one thing you can do. Right. So here's one thing that you can do every day. It, maybe it's just drinking water to start. But that's going to help. That's going to give him the most bang for his buck with the least amount of effort. So that's, that's the key. That, you know, finding that focus. And it really depends on you know, how strict you want to get with the person. Because the biosignature, there's a lot of supplements that will help you mitigate different you know, sites. And you can drop body fat pretty quick with this thing. Um, if you know what you're doing and it's a powerful tool like I'm still I've been doing it for three and a half years and I feel like I'm just kind of scratching the surface with, with, with this thing of really you know using it the right way yeah there's, so, there's a lot of stuff that a lot of ways you can go with all that so you mentioned supplements is there are I know supplements are a big part of that protocol for mm -hmm. people who are a little skeptical or leery of supplements is there a way to do it without the supplements absolutely I mean the supplements will just expedite the process like they make it a lot easier to get faster results that's that's the whole idea to kind of right. fill those nutritional de deficiencies. But supplements are this, man. Supplements supplement a good diet. And I think that's where people lose. Like, people are looking for, like, you know, we say it all the time, the magic pill. Here's the pill that's going to make you lose fat, and you don't have to change anything. Listen, man, it's not out there. If it was, you know, I'd be selling it. <laughs> like, it's, it's, it's not out there. So you got to clean up, you know, the, the supplements are maybe like third tier. You got to clean up your lifestyle, clean up the nutrition, and then once you have those in place, the supplements will help aid. But if you don't have everything else, it's like, you know, it's not going to help you. You can sprinkle, you know, you can sprinkle creatine on your, on your frosted flakes, but it's not going to do anything. For, you know what I mean? Like, you're not going to see the benefit. And that's why I think people, but people get frustrated with supplements too, because we have clients come in every day. Oh, I've tried fish oil before. It doesn't work for me. I've tried this. I've tried that. It doesn't work for me. It doesn't work for you because you're not doing everything else you need to do to kind of speed that process up. And I, so I think, you know, we're not, we, we don't give huge supplement protocols for, for a number of reasons. But number one, because most people aren't ready because their diet is crappy or their sleep is terrible, their lifestyle habits just don't, you know, they're not ready for it. So, so we're, a little, we're a little slower to give supplements than most people. Gotcha, okay. Well, let's go back to, to that, uh, the biosig stuff. Mm -hmm. I guess off the top of my head, I would guess that you would see probably insulin and cortisol as probably the two biggest hormones that you guys need to address right away. Is that accurate? Yeah, without a doubt. Insulin, cortisol, and estrogen, those are, we call them, kind of call them those the big three. And that's really what the, you know, the biosignature kind of preaches, and we see it every day. But without a doubt, I mean, stress, and, and we're talking about insulin and cortisol, it's stress and blood sugar. So, okay. you know, clean it yeah, up. So let's do, right. let's do this. Let's go, let's take each one of those, yep. um, insulin, cortisol, and estrogen. Yep. And, and let's talk about three to four of the first steps that somebody could take to um, start making corrections there. And, and, you know, without somebody coming in for one of these assessments, you know, yep. We don't want to uh, to you know have somebody be a, like a what is it a hemophiliac where they, they hear something and they think they have that disease hypochondriac that, that's it hypochondriac yeah yeah, 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 right. yeah, yeah. so um, drew a blank on that one thank you yeah Tom. no no um, so you know somebody's gonna sit here and say oh well this is me that's me how would somebody know if insulin cortisol or, or estrogen is an issue for them all right put it this way um, if you're above a certain body fat percentage probably all three so I, I mean depending on if you're a male and you're above 20% or you know, above 18%, or if you're a female and you're above 25%, probably all three of them are issues for you. So, so here's the thing. With the biosig, it's not like one's an issue and one's not. It's just one is more of an issue. Do you know what I mean? Right. Uh, but when you're looking at actually the body and where you're storing fat, basically cortisol is the belly button. 
So the umbilical site and the, and the and pollock runs by signature, the, the belly button is the, is the cortisol site. So if you had a big gut in the front and that's where you're storing most of your fat, um, that's, you know, that's your cortisol guy. Um, love handles, the, the super iliac, so right above the hip bone, you know, what we call the love handles, that's the insulin site. So that would be your blood sugar. And then any fat stored below the waist in the legs are the estrogen sites. So the back of your hamstring, your butt. So a lot of women that you see, you know, and that's when you're looking at women, and I'm sure you see it with some of your adult clients, you can get women really lean up top pretty easily, but losing the, the fat on their legs and the fat on their butt is a much harder process. All right. So every female listener we have just sat up, turned up the volume. Yeah. Yep. Um, all right. So, so let's attack that. What, what would we do from a non-exercise standpoint yeah. to, to help get better results from the waist down for women? All right, so this one is, and I'll be honest with you, it's, it's a much harder process because it's about detoxifying the system. So, so the, the estrogen sites, and it's harder for women because they naturally have a higher estrogen as they get older, their testosterone drops. So, you know, the things you want to do, you want to increase testosterone. So any, the way you would increase testosterone with an athlete, and, and women get a little freaked out by this, but women produce testosterone as well. But the older you get, the less they will. Now, so. And just to clarify, we're not talking about above the normal range. We're not talking no, about no, 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 maximal. No. We're just no, talking I mean, about. I mean, when, I know, mean look, think, think about, like, you talk to women that are over the age of 35, and they say, like, I want to look the way I did when I was 20. Well, it's, it's, hard, for you, it's hard for you to do that because, you know, your, your hormones are in a much different state. If you had kids, if you have stress, all these things, you're bringing a lot more toxins into your system over time. So your natural testosterone levels and estrogen levels get shifted, right? So women produce testosterone the same way men do, just not at the same level. Right. All right, so women need testosterone to growth hormone to build muscle mass the same way men do. But it's just harder for them, and that's why it's harder for them to build muscle mass because they don't produce as much, right? So the way, number one, you want to try to increase those type of things the same way you would increase an athlete's testosterone. So lift, lift heavy weights. That's why women get really good results when they start lifting heavy. Um, increase your protein. Get better sleep. All kind of things that we would say – to increase testosterone. Now, as far as decreasing estrogen, it's about detoxifying your system. So, you know, one of the reasons why you want to eat grass-fed organic meat, one of the reasons why you want to eat organic vegetables, stay away from processed foods and any kind of chemicals you're bringing in. Um, a big one that they talked about during the biosignature is like hair care products and, and, and makeup and deodorant. And think about all this crap that people put on their bodies every day that's just loaded with chemicals. You're bringing all this stuff in. And your body doesn't want to put that stuff in the organ, so it flushes, pushes it to the fat. You're going to store all that fat. And most of the women, it's below the waist. Does yeah, that make sense? I think that's, that's a good point. Um, you know, most people don't realize that, that our, you know, all animals store toxins in their fat cells. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why a lot of those detox diets that you see, you know, can, can have the claims that they have where you lose so many inches or so much weight because you're just you're, you're draining that you know, it's like pouring Drano down the drain and all this stuff comes out. But, you know, there, there are safe ways to do that. And I'm going to let you talk about that in just a second. Um, but, you know, the other thing on that, you, you mentioned like hair care products and cosmetics, all that. Um, I'm, I'd be willing to bet that you're aware of this, but most people don't realize that every cosmetic product has near the barcode. It has uh, like a color coded square. And it's either black, there's three different colors, and, and when it's black, it means that it has the most chemicals and toxins in it. Um, do you, are you guys aware of that? Do you guys coach your estrogen yeah, we, clients on we that? Actually, we actually have, a, there's a website, ewg.org. Environmental Working Group. Yeah, and, yep. and, and they have a skin, it's called the Skin Deep Database. And you can go into this thing, and they have like hundreds of thousands of, of products in there. And you could type in, if you don't have the product, um, if they don't have your actual product, you can just go on your ingredient list and type in the ingredient, and it gives you, like, really simple, like, red, green, yellow type of, like, toxicity levels. But it'll freak people out, man. And there's stuff, like, the big ones you see are, are deodorant, um, shampoo, and even, like, stuff like, like baby shampoo and things like that. Like, you're putting this stuff on your kids, baby lotion. Yeah. But, like, lotions, deodorant, stuff you use every day that you put, like, think about how porous your armpits are, and you're rubbing these chemicals in every day. And, yeah. just, and that's it just, it's just getting soaked into your system. So, I mean, the hard, the hard part, but it's, it's hard because it's a, it's a lifestyle habit and, and, and you don't, you don't not want to wear deodorant. Yeah. You, you know don't want to I mean? walk so, around smelling, you know, yeah. like, like the dude that just came from a three day music festival yeah. and you haven't showered and 
No, yeah. but um, no, that's really cool. We're going to have that in the show notes. Um, we haven't mentioned that yet on the podcast today, but um, we always have show notes. So if you're listening in the car, don't feel like you have to write this down or remember it. Go to the blog, check it out. Uh, we'll have the video version on our blog. And underneath, we're going to have show notes um, talking about um, – I will have links to everything that we talk about. So I'll put a link up to that website, the EWG database. Um, there's, there's also another app that you can get um, on your smartphone. It's called Boycott. So it's spelled just like boycott, but you swap the O for a U. And with that app, you can enter any campaign that you are passionate about, whether you want to avoid genetically modified foods, whether you want to avoid certain chemicals in your cosmetics. And you can literally just go through the grocery store shelf, pick up the item, scan the barcode on your smartphone, and it will tell you whether it's either in conflict or not in conflict with the things that you choose. That's um, awesome. So that's I, really I, cool I didn't know, I didn't know about too. that one. I, I got to write that down. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, that's really, really cool. But um, just to, Ryan, just to, that, just, sorry, just, just to preface that, man, I don't, I don't want to like freak people out that are listening. Uh, you, that's kind of like the last step. We were talking about it before we started the recording, like getting – you know, your makeup and stuff would probably be the last step that I would work with women that, you know, if someone, let's say someone got down to like, you know, 15 or 14% body fat for an adult female, which is pretty good, you know, uh, and they want to get those extra pounds off of the extra, like your last four or five pounds of fat off. That's where we would take that step. But you can do a lot of damage with cleaning up your diet and cleaning up other lifestyle things. That, that's just one of the steps along the path. So I know people are listening, like, there's no way I can ever do this. I can't lose. Like, no, there's a lot of other things you can do that are much simpler than that. But if, if you're at the point where I just, you're doing everything right, that might be kind of the missing link. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great point. And, and I had somebody ask this question um, a few days ago uh, over email. And my response was, was, you know, if you look at this as a spectrum and, you know, on one end of the spectrum you have, it's almost like staring at the sun. It's so intense that, you know, you just, you can't get all the way there. On the other end of the spectrum, I told him it was like, you know, having your eyes closed in an underwater cave where you are on that spectrum is, is, you know, it's relative to you, your individual, you know, goals and, and, you know, priorities and, you know, wherever you are, you just want to take the next step closer. And, you know, if, if, like Tom just said, if you're a beginner or, or if you haven't cleaned up your lifestyle, your nutrition, your sleep, um, you know, then start with those things first, then progress to that. What are some other ways that you guys help your, your women detoxify their system? All right, number. I mean, or number one. Yeah. So I'll be, right now, right now we're actually doing a um, what we call our our detox challenge. It's twenty one day detox challenge. We have like fifty people doing. A lot of women are in the group. Um, but listen, we don't do like cleanses and like the over the counter stuff where you're loading your body up with stuff like laxatives and all that. There's two basic ways that you can detox your body. Number one, improve your digestion. So I think that's more important. Most people's digestion is just jacked up. So make sure you're drinking enough water. And we give them water goals, but the basic one, you want a basic formula, half your body weight in ounces of water. I'm sure you've heard that before. Yep. But that's the bare minimum. Then if you're working out, you're, you know, so you want to make sure you're, you know, you're peeing a lot. Um, and we get like, we get pretty close with our clients. We talk about their poop. You know, you got to make sure you're going to the bathroom. Most women aren't having a good bowel movement every day. And so if they are, it's like, it's diarrhea or it's like, you know, it's not healthy. So, so we increase their fiber or, you know, we give them, you know, that's a supplement that we can give to people make them eat more vegetables to make sure they're having a good bowel movement every day because you can have all these toxins in your body but if you can't get them out through your urine and through your feces you got no shot because even if you're even if you're getting out of your fat you're losing it's fat still staying in your just system. floating around your system yeah so you got to make sure your digestion's on point i mean and that's base level digestion is number one and then the next one is just not stop bringing the stuff in so if you if you drink alcohol um you know it, if you're eating all like we talked about all the processed foods and stuff like that. So those are the two baseline levels. One, the digestion. Two, stop bringing the basic stuff in that's loaded with chemicals and loaded with things you know are, are going to give you problems. Awesome. Awesome. Um, I'm going to put uh, some of that digestion stuff in the show notes as well. There's another, I'll put, a, I'll put a link to this blog post that I've had on our website before for um, a detox drink. This is something that I do every single morning. A lot of our members do this. Um, first thing we drink every morning is about a cup of warm water with lemon juice and apple cider vinegar. Um, you can add a dash of cayenne pepper, and I'll even put a teaspoon of sea salt in that. Um, the sea salt that's will awesome. help your adrenals. That's awesome. um, what's that? No, that's awesome. That's great. 
Um, so I think it looks like we, we're having some connection issues. I think uh, hopefully that'll work itself out. Um, so I think that kind of covers the, the issue of, you know, elevated uh, estrogen levels. So, yep. you know, with, with testosterone, especially in females, um, what, aside from, you know, massive uh, or disproportionate amounts of storing body fat below the waist, are there other signs or symptoms of unbalanced hormones, especially testosterone, estrogen? Yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, kind of the basic ones we talked about, you know, like lack of energy levels. Um, when you look, when you're looking at the actual body, like the body, the tricep is a, is what we call the androgen site. So a lot of women, you know, talk about the flabby triceps. That's that's another reason why, you know, you know the testosterone levels are dropping, and you see kind of the a lot of the fat storage in the back of the arm. But when you're talking about just from a a, few, a lifestyle perspective. You know, lack of energy, lack of sex drive, those type of things can, can definitely, you know, women need, like we said, they need testosterone to feel good the same way men do, just at a, a much lesser level. Yeah. But I so, think. So, again, we're going to send that, that demographic right back to, hey, start lifting heavy, get away from the pink dumbbells, um, yep. you know, eating quality protein, sleep yeah, better. I, right. I think the protein, and when we, do, when we do, like, nutrition coaching with our female clients, the protein, I think, is number one because most women, I've, I've, it's very, very rare that I see a woman who eats enough protein throughout the day when, when we first start working with her. And it's hard because most women are afraid of gaining weight, and the, the number on the scale scares the hell out of them. Or if I start telling them, you need, you need to eat, we use generally their lean body mass number. So if a woman weighs 120 pounds um, and her lean body mass is 100 pounds, we tell her, you got to eat 100 grams of protein a day. And it'll freak them out. I can't eat that much. It's impossible. Uh, when you break it down, you say, you know, a couple eggs for breakfast, you know, a, a salad with a chicken breast for lunch, and then a piece of meat for dinner. It, you, can, you can, you know, it's, it's not as much as you think, but it's very, very rare that women are eating enough protein to kind of help maintain muscle mass or build muscle mass. And, and that's, and it freaks a lot of women out because we've seen women that have lost two or three dress sizes and haven't lost a pound. Right. And they're like, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. But I think it's more of a mindset than anything else of seeing that number on a the scale. They associate a number on the scale with how they look. Right. And it's, it's, that's, not, that's not necessarily the case. No, 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 not at all. And I, that, I, I'm glad that you went that far in depth with that answer because my follow-up question when you started talking about protein was going to be how much. And that's the exact same way we calculate it for, for our females. It's the exact same number that we use. So that's perfect. Um, you know, and I think on that note, with, with women, you mentioned that they're afraid to, to do things like that because they think they're going to get bigger. You know, one of the one of the things that people don't understand is that you know the fat that we have on our body is between our skin and our muscles. So if we do things to increase our muscle size um, without losing fat, then yes, the total circumference is going to increase. Um, but that said, muscle itself is more dense than fat. So the, so five pounds of muscle takes up significantly less space than five pounds of fat. And that's how you can see, you know, when these women start to recomposition their body, they gain muscle, they lose body fat, even though the scale weight doesn't change, their body occupies less space. So they're losing inches and, and they're getting that appearance that they want where, you know, hey, my waist is smaller, my butt is, you know, higher, it's lifted and, you know, my thighs don't touch anymore and, you know, I'm starting to, you know, look the way I did when I was 20 or the way I want to look. Without a doubt. And that's why I think having, and, and that's another thing the biostate does for us, is it gives us a unit of measurement that's not just a number on a scale. Where we can look and say, like, look, you've lost this much on your belly button, this much on your hips, this much, you know, on, on your butt. And we can see exactly where it's coming off. We take, you know, circumference measurements so we can see how many inches they're losing. Don't use this scale as a parameter when, you, when fat loss is the goal. Now, now there's different levels. So if, if, so if you came to me and you were 450 pounds, I would say, dude, you got to lose weight. You know right. what I mean? Like, we just got to get the weight off because it's not healthy to have that much weight on your system. So that's a totally different kind of methodology. But I think a lot of the times you take, people take that weight loss mentality and bring it into someone who just wants to lose 10 pounds of fat. Right. They're two totally different ball games. Where if you have a woman who weighs 130 pounds and her goal is 125, she's not going to use the same methodology as someone who weighs 400 and wants to get to 200. You know, it, you can't, and I think that's the problem. There's a lot of crossover there. Yeah. It's two totally different things. Yeah. So, and, and, so the scale can't be a good parameter for, it can for some people that are very unhealthy and need to lose weight. Like, don't get me wrong, you know, th those people that work with the massively obese that are just trying to lose weight, 
that's money. Like weigh them in because they need to lose weight because you're afraid a body can't handle that much weight. Right. And then once they get to a healthy weight, then you can try to tweak that stuff. But if you're just trying to lose body fat, the scale is useless. And I mean, not useless, but it's the it's probably the bottom rung of, of our measurements. Right. Um, all right. So so let's go dig in a little bit on cortisol. Um, yeah. You know, so we talked a lot about the estrogen. Um, we'll, we'll get to insulin, uh, um, and, and I'm sure that that's something that people who have been following us for a while have heard tons about insulin and carbohydrate intake. But um, with cortisol, a, a lot of people, you know, they hear that, but they don't necessarily know what it means. Everybody's got stress in their lives. As humans, the levels of stress that we encounter today are so much greater than the stress that we had, you know, at, at, that our ancestors faced. There's just so much input coming in all the time, so many things to juggle. How can people manage that? Um, you know, what kind of tips do you guys have and use for decreasing cortisol? All right, so, I mean, basically, number one is nutrition. So we go back to what we talked about. Well, really, before nutrition, sleep. So I think that is the one, like, I'm, again, like I said, no woman has ever come eating eat enough protein. I've, I've, I can't remember the last time someone comes in like, yeah, I get good night's sleep every night. I get eight <laughs> solid hours of, of quality sleep. So, so, so we kind of – You, did, you did an awesome video for one of our friends, um, Smitty, and, yep. and it was five – I think it was five ways to get better sleep. Do yep. you want to run through that real yeah. quick? Um, I, 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 I'm going to remember off, off the top of my head. Number one was black the room out. So totally that, – that's, that's key. So get the room totally pitch black. So if you're laying in your bed, you shouldn't be able to open your eyes – and, and see any light so you no, can't tell no the difference. led lights no cell phones no alarm nothing, clock. nothing in the room not even like the light on your smoke detector because light light entering the eye will trigger your brain so if you're rolling over in the middle of the night and opening your eyes if it's pitch black you'll go right back to sleep but if so, there's anything that can wake you up that you're in trouble so you gotta like get blackout shades and i mean that help has helped more people than i can tell but it's got to be like it's, it's hard to do if you lay in your room like try tonight lay in your room and open your eyes and if you can see anything it's not dark enough. Like, it's got to be pitch black. So if I walked into your bedroom, would I see, uh, like, electrical tape over top of the blinking light on your smoke detector? I have, I have duct tape on my smoke detector. I have a towel that I put in front of my door. And then I have blackout shades that I put. I don't put it up all the time, but I have it, like, at night I put it up over the window. That's yes, awesome. Sir. Yeah. Um, it's, but it's, it's hard. And here's the thing. Like, if you're not used to that, I wouldn't recommend doing that on a day you have to go to work or you have to get up early. Because, like, if anybody's – and the example I always give, if you've ever been in a hotel room, most hotels are pretty well blacked out. So if you've ever been in a hotel room and it's a new place, you're sleeping, and all of a sudden you wake up and it's, like, 10 a.m., yeah. you're like, what the hell's going on? Yeah. Like, that's why. Because the room that's, is so dark. And, and that's a really smart strategy on their part because they want you to know – they want you to associate that particular hotel with having a great night's sleep. Great so night's next sleep, time yeah. you're there, you're going to come back to that hotel. No doubt about it. But if you ever slept in a basement or slept anywhere where it's really dark, it's hard to get up. So if you haven't done that before, I wouldn't recommend doing that on a night where you on a day where you have to get up early because it's hard it's hard to wake up out of that if you're not used to it. Yeah. So for all of our 5 a.m. boot campers, don't try that on a uh, no, night before. You won't, boot camp. Dude, I'm telling you, you won't you won't get up. Um, the second one that we do is uh, kind of associated with that is but get all electronics out of the room, and like kind of have a wind down time. So you know, get the TV out, get the computer out of your room. So a lot of people. Most people I talk to are working on their laptop right up before they go to bed. They close the laptop lid and they try to fall asleep. Or they're watching TV and they either turn it off and roll over or they have a sleep timer. So they're trying to fall asleep with the TV on. I mean, it's not going to work. You're, again, light entering your brain, entering your, eye, entering your eye triggers your brain. That, that, so if you're watching TV, go ahead, I'm sorry, yeah, man. Well, kind of, will you go into like the cortisol cycle and, and how – what that light is actually doing yeah. to because so, I know a lot of people are gonna be like, oh well, I fall asleep fine, that doesn't bother me. Yeah, so so cortisol is basically I know people know the term adrenaline. So adrenaline is an energy hormone, right? So cortisol is a low grade adrenaline. So any kind of stress and stress doesn't have to be what you're thinking about, like oh I'm so stressed out. You know, stress can be anything that gives you energy. So working out produces cortisol. Working out is a form of stress. You know, watching a show that gets you fired up. If you're watching a game late at night. Uh, my girlfriend watches all the housewives, like the real housewives of everywhere. That's, that's like stressful stuff. You know, you get fired up watching that. And I tell her, like, she doesn't sleep real well. And I'm like, yeah, stop watching the housewives at, at 10 o'clock at night. But, but no joke, but that stuff, anything that gets you, like, stimulated mentally, it didn't induce cortisol. So even if you can fall asleep, it's only because you're so tired. And then that cortisol is still pumping through your veins. So how many people do you talk to that wake up four or five times during the night? 
And that's why. Like, their hormones are so unbalanced that you can't have a restful night's sleep because your body is still pumping all this stuff out. So by getting rid of the electronics, having a cutoff point, you can kind of calm yourself down. So think about, like, you want cortisol high in the morning and then to slowly decrease at the night. But if you have time, like, right before you go to bed, if it spikes again, you don't have enough time to calm yourself down. So it's got to be, like, a gradual decrease throughout the night. Yeah, it's tough for people to do because a lot of people work late at night or have a work call late at night. It gets you fired up, and then it's hard to fall asleep. We're going to come back to that uh, cortisol spike in the morning because yeah. that influences – our nutritional approach, and, and I'm sure if you're precision nutrition, that, that that's incorporated into what you guys are doing too. But um, so we'll stay with cortisol and, and the five sleep tips for now. Yeah. Um, so we got two. What are some other ways that people can improve their? Uh, sleep? I said real simple one is just cool the room off. Like it should be like almost almost uncomfortably cool. I think the, I want to say the research is anywhere between 68 degrees and 72 degrees, but you should have to use a blanket. Like it shouldn't having a warm room is one of the worst things that you can do. Yeah, and anybody that's tried to sleep in a room, you know, in the summer when your AC goes out, you know why that's not fun. Yeah, yeah, so like think, you know, like, like a cave. You wanna have it, you wanna have it cooled off. That's a really simple one. So use a blanket, um, cool the room down. So that, that's, that's one that's definitely beneficial. How many is that, that's three? Yeah. The, the fourth one, um, there are some supplements that you can use, and, and you know, we use a, a magnesium supplement. It's topical magnesium. Um, some people use melatonin, which is fine, as long as, and think about this, Anything that, you, that does it, it helps you calm down gradually. So like an Ambien or a sleeping pill or something like that that just knocks you right out, all it's doing is making you unconscious. It's not helping you calm down. So the sleeping aids that we like to use, um, things like we have different types of magnesium that we use with different people, uh, melatonin, but things that gradually help you calm down and just kind of help you fall asleep, not things that just immediately knock you out. Alcohol is not one of them. A lot of people say alcohol helps you calm down, and it does, you know, mentally but it but it wreaks havoc on your hormonal system so you know a lot of people use wine and I mean, a lot we talk about go back to the women we have women you know i need two glasses of wine to fall asleep at night that's not a good sleep enhancer no. so that's not no. a supplement that i would recommend go go into that for for a few minutes what is that what exactly is it doing how is it wreaking havoc well i mean you gotta think alcohol number one it's we talked about detoxification one of the biggest detoxifying organs is your liver so, so you're putting your liver on overdrive overnight. You know what I mean? Like your body needs to rest too. But, but it's also, you know, it, it, believe it or not, it's, it's getting you kind of fired up. It's, it's, it's basically what we talked about, making you unconscious. So, so hormonally, it stimulates your system. But mentally, it knocks you out. So it's, a, it's kind of a weird mix that your body's not used to. Yeah. So, so alcohol right before you go to bed is not the best bet. You're not getting – no one's ever drank a bunch of booze and said, oh, I had a great night's sleep. You know what I mean? Like – like, and think about it. We've all had, like, benders where you drink and you sleep for 12 hours and you wake up and you still feel like crap. Yeah. Now, how is that? So if alcohol helps you sleep, you know, like, your body is, is in a total detoxification mode. You're, you're filling your body with toxins and you're just being unconscious in that state. So it's not, it's not a good mix. You know what I love about uh, your approach to, to coaching is that, you know, everything that you bring science-wise to the table, you can, you can show – an experience in life that everybody can relate to. I mean, everybody has had that, you know, morning after where they're like, wow, I don't, it doesn't matter how long I slept. I still feel like I got hit by a truck and like I need to sleep the rest of the day or, you know, all those other examples that we've talked about on this uh, podcast. I mean, those are things that people can relate to. And, and there are little aha moments that when we increase our awareness and we pay attention to what our body is telling us, all the information is there. We know what works, what we should do, what we shouldn't do. It's just, for some reason, our society just doesn't pay attention. And I think it's because we do. We have so much stuff going on that such a fast paced life that we just, we don't have, we, we tell ourselves we don't have time to listen to those things. No, without a doubt. I mean, when we coach people on nutrition, sometimes they look at me like, that's all you want me to do? Like, you just want me to drink water every day? Or you just want me, it's like, yeah, it's that simple. Like, you know what you need to do we just got to step back. And right. I think as fitness professionals, um, we got to treat nutrition the same way we, we treat training. Like if someone came into your gym, you wouldn't just say like, all right, we're going to put 315 on a, on a bar and we're going to do some back squats today with some woman who's never squatted before, right? right? So if you have some woman who's been eating a crappy diet her whole life and you come in and, oh, you know what? We're going to go hardcore paleo tomorrow and you're cutting everything out. She's not ready for that. You know, some people are, 
But most people aren't. So I think you got to simplify the approach and say, listen, one step, we're going to spoon feed you this stuff and make it as simple as possible. That's all people can handle. Yeah. You know, we talk about like training and training and conditioning, you talk about the training age. So what's someone's training age if they've never trained before? Well, if someone's never eaten clean before, you know, they have a very low training age when it comes to nutrition. So we got to start them real slow. Yeah, that's, that's a great concept. I really like that idea. Um, we're going to let you off the hook on that number five on the video because I think we're both drawing a blank. I will, gotcha. We'll post the, the link to that video in the show okay. notes so people can check it out. Um, and uh, it'll also give them a, some, some – you're, you're in Gabriel Fitness when you do that video so people can see the inside of the gym. Yes, sir. See yes, where sir. you guys are doing your magic. Um, you guys are doing some awesome stuff up there. Um, what uh, – Let's talk about insulin just for a minute. Um, we're gonna we're gonna run out of time, unfortunately, because I think okay. you and I could sit here. We could talk about this all day long. Without a doubt. Without but, a doubt. Um, the, uh, the you mentioned earlier with the the cortisol cycle. Yeah. Um, it peaks in the morning. It helps us get out of bed and get our day going. Um, one of the reasons that I put the salt in that morning detox drink that I use is that. Um, when you wake up in the morning, your your body has to upregulate blood pressure so that you can actually stand up without passing out. If you've ever stood up really fast and you felt like you were going to pass out, you know that's that's what we're talking about. So in the morning, your part of your adrenal system's function is to help make that happen. Um, and when you salt is is part of increasing that blood pressure. Um, so if if we don't have issues with hypertension or, or blood pressure issues, um, then this is a good practice. And you may not need a whole tape or a whole teaspoon, but it, it's going to protect your adrenal glands because now you're giving your body the substrates that it needs for this particular function. Um, and then that saves your adrenal glands for later in the day. So cortisol is one of these things that's peaking to help us, you know, get up and get moving. So yep. one of the things that I've found um, both through tons of evidence and in journals and, and, and also, you know, with, you know, just real world experience, both for myself and with clients, is that eating carbohydrates first thing in the morning is probably the number one mistake that people make when it comes to fat loss, controlling insulin. Um, that's a big approach that we have. Do you, do you guys find that? Is that how you approach yeah, it? No, a hundred percent, hundred percent. And the way we were taught in the bio signature was they call it the fishing effect. So cortisol and, and insulin are kind of interrelated or if cortisol is high, insulin will be low and vice versa. So exactly what you're talking about. If you want cortisol high in the morning, you want to keep insulin low. Um, so there's a couple ways to go about it. I, you know, people like intermittent, intermittent fasting I know is, is very popular these days. Um, I'm not a big fan of for, for people that are overweight for people that have, so I like to have people eat breakfast but we use, you know, the meat and nuts breakfast, the, that's polyquist, or we, but we call it a protein and fat breakfast. Yeah. So a good serving of protein and a good serving of fat. And, and it's hard. It's hard because there's a mental thing. The way we tell people is a healthy meal is a healthy meal no matter when you eat it. So we tell people, have a piece of chicken, have some salmon for breakfast. And they look at you like you're crazy because in our society, breakfast is bagels, or at least in, in Northeast, it's bagels and donuts. And um, you guys have bagels down there? We do, but not like you do up they're there. Not as, they're not as good, right? Yeah, that's, no. and that's the hard part. When you live in Jersey or live in New York, the bagels are good, man. Yeah. But bagels, donuts, cereal, waffles, pan, any kind of breakfast food that you can think of, um, it's processed carbohydrate, except for eggs is really the only one. So we try to get people to eat a piece of steak, to eat a piece of chicken, to have a burger or some turkey or something for breakfast that's a good serving of protein. So and that's where we start. Absolutely. You know what? The, you, you say in cereal, and, and that just reminded me of a story that I love to tell people. And um, a lot of people in our gym have heard me talk about this. Um, and you are actually the one that introduced me to this article. So for all the people in the gym, this is Tom. This is the guy who, who introduced this to me. Um, but cereal, breakfast cereal, was actually invented by a guy who worked in a sanitarium way back when you know our society was we were prudes and we were trying to lower people's testosterone so that, you know, there would not be as much, you know, sexuality. Yep. And if you go to the Kellogg's, it, it's in Battle Creek, Michigan. So Kellogg's headquarters is there now. And that's exactly where the sanitarium was. The guy's name, the doctor was Dr. Kellogg. His brother started, you know, or, or family was the Kellogg's that, you know, from breakfast cereal. And cornflakes were actually invented. That was the first breakfast cereal under that company. 
they were invented to lower people's testosterone to decrease their sexuality. Without a doubt. So, no, I, 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 dude, people think that cereal is like the healthiest thing. And they say, oh, well, I had, I had Special K or I had Kashi or, you know. It's like I, I tell people have Lucky Charms. They taste better. And it's, you're having, you know, it's a little more sugar, but it's the same. It's doing the same thing to your body. Yeah. So you might as well enjoy it if you're going to do it. Because we live, and, and you know what the big thing we see with our young athletes? Our young athletes, that's all they eat, man. Yeah. Like, and, and like a, you talk about cereal every single day. Cereal and, and, and terrible milk that's been pasteurized and all the nutrients oh, yeah, are killed in it. It's, you know, pumped full of estrogens and hormones. And you see these high school guys running around that have higher estrogen than, you know, 50 year old women should have without a doubt i mean that's i think with with kids especially you're talking about like people wanting to get them to pay attention to school more and, and uh, give them a piece of meat for breakfast and, and and a little bit of healthy fat and the difference you see when we talk when we have our high school kids gaining muscle mass and you know improving their attention span and all this stuff like it's as simple as that give them a little more lean protein but but when you're talking about starting a day with with a protein rich and a fat rich breakfast and almost no carbohydrates except for maybe vegetables or some fruit. Right. But staying away from processed carbs in general, that's especially in the beginning of the day. Like most people can probably need to stay away from that crap throughout the entire day. Yeah. But the, but and the beginning of the day is even worse. That's like you were talking about earlier. You know, the the more somebody has to lose, the more important it is for them to stay away from those carbohydrates throughout the entire day. The less somebody has to lose, so that 130 pound female that we had as an example who wants to get down to 125, you know, she's not going to, you know, have to avoid carbohydrates later in the day the same way a 400 pound person would with all that weight to lose. Without a doubt. Like, and that's one of the things the biosignature will show us is, you know, how sensitive is someone to blood sugar. So, you know, how insulin, you know, the term insulin sensitive gets thrown around pretty much. But all that means is, like, how well do you handle carbohydrates? So like you're a pretty lean dude, right? So so you could probably handle carbs a lot better than I can. Number one, because I weigh I'm bigger than you, but also because I was 400 pounds at one time. So my hormonal system still isn't, you know, uh, it had those, I don't have great regulation of blood sugar because I was so fat. Well, and, and you are you're you're a fairly lean guy. So me and you have different. We would probably have different nutritional approaches if we were trying to get as lean as possible or build muscle mass. And that's what people have a know, hard time understanding. And, and that's the the. It's interesting that you bring that up and, and compare and contrast with, you know, our bodies. But the truth is, and I don't know that a lot of people know this, I, I do talk about it, but I'm the only male in my family who is not diabetic. Wow. Um, my father is, his brother is, his other brother is. Um, so that was one of the things that got me started on this path when I was in college. Is, you know, I don't want to be that guy. Um, yeah. My high school basketball coach's dad had to have his foot amputated because of complications from diabetes when I was in high school. Wow. You know, and then I'm, I'm seeing this, I'm seeing him cry about it. You know, when you're, when you're a high school athlete, your, your coach is a big influence on your life. And oh, you know, I see this man who is our leader crying because his dad has to have his foot cut off. And you know, my dad's diabetic, his brother's diabetic, his other brother is. And I'm like, well, that's my path unless I change. So, you know, I, I may be more insulin sensitive now or I may have better tolerance for carbohydrates now than I ever have but it's only because I've you know basically trained my body to handle them properly and and given them to my body when it needed them and only then that's awesome man that's great I, didn't, I had no idea man I had no idea that's awesome it's 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 not uh it, I wasn't born into this <laughs> I got you I know I, I got you man I totally understand totally understand um all right well, I think we're, we're almost out of time. Like I said, unfortunately, I, Tom, I would love to sit here and do this all day, but I think we both have uh, some other work that we have to get to. Yes, sir. Um, your, your clients at Gabriel Fitness want to hang out with you today. Where can people find you? Um, just to, our website, www.gabrielfitness.com. That's uh, Gabriel with one L. Um, and I'm, my profile is on there. If people want to hit me up personally, it's just Tom at gabrielfitness.com is my email. I don't have a personal website or anything like that. People have been on my case. Um, hopefully soon I'll have some of that stuff up. But right now, I'm just kind of, I'm, I'm not a big internet guy yet. So, so nothing like that yet. We'll, we'll try to change that, man. We need we'll try. We'll try. You are a star. We just got to let people find out about you. Thank you, man. Um, all right, Tom, give me, um, this, this is our close that we have at the end of every episode. One tip that people can take from what we talked about today Put it into action immediately and, and see progress or benefit. Uh, we talked about it, man. Sleep. 
sleep. If you can improve someone's sleep and don't think it has to be quantity all the time. Cause I know we talked about a lot of people like, Oh, it's impossible for me to get eight hours of sleep because I have kids or I have a job. It's fine. So how much can you get six hours? Good. Let's make those six hours as immaculate, as perfect as you possibly can pitch black the room, cool the room. How, no matter how much you can get, make that a quality because six hours of quality sleep is better than 10 hours of tossing and turning. So take that time that you have and make it money. And, and I think that will have an effect on all the hormones we talked about. Sleep is like that underlying factor that affects everything. Yeah. So if you can do one thing, improve your sleep. That's, that's great. I love it. And, and this is episode five and you're now the third person to say sleep. So 60% of Pil our, the, Pil the Pilger talked about it too. Pilger did. And, yeah. uh, Travis did also. Okay. So, okay. Um, but nobody went as in depth and, and, and gave the, the, I guess the, the how to like you did. So that that's beneficial. That's awesome. Um, all right. So part two of that is one tip. It, if it's related to what we talked about today, that's okay. If, if it's not, that's even better. So one other tip, the best piece of advice that you could give somebody on having, you know, a better life, kicking more ass, being more yeah. badass. So, so I think one big thing that we're just kind of like getting into uh, at Gabriel Fitness is don't, don't add to people's stress. So this is for fitness professionals, but this is also for someone who's training. You know, like a lot of trainers want to go in and beat the hell out of people. If you have someone who's highly stressed out and then they come into a gym, and then you beat the hell out of them even more, you could be creating more problems than, than they already have. So the training could actually have a negative effect on you. So when, when we're talking to people, you know, figure out what their lifestyle is all about and maybe you know, having them crush heavy weights and doing crazy sprints and circuits is not gonna be the best thing for them. Maybe you need to help them you know, reduce some of that stress. Some, we looked, you know, we're starting to dabble with some HRV type stuff you know, heart rate training and putting heart rate monitors on people and making sure we're not getting them too high of a heart rate. We're keeping them below a certain number because we, we found that we were actually compounding some problems. We had guys coming to train at night and, and we, were, we were affecting their sleep because they were so amped up leaving the gym, they, they couldn't sleep. So we were having negative effects. Yeah. So the training can actually be a negative effect for people if you're not doing it the right way. That's, that's really valuable information, and, and that's something that, personally, I've started using the heart rate monitor. I, I'm by no means an expert on HRV, um, and that's actually one of our future guests that um, we're going to have lined up is, uh, is going to talk about some HRV stuff, uh, what yeah, it so is, I'm... how to use it. And, and, you know, Pilger even hit on that with, with talking about, you know, managing your CNS stress. And, oh, well, Pilger's know. smart. You see, you know, when you're working, elite athletes have been doing it for a long time, and Pilger works a lot with a lot of big-time boxers, and you, talk, you hear the term overtraining a lot. But if you got to listen, if you got a guy who's who works on, you know, who works 12 hours a day at a desk, or a mom who's running around all day with her kids, and then bring him into the gym and just beat the hell out of them, you know, you're just compounding the problem. Yeah, you're just you're digging that ditch deeper. You're not allowing the body to super compensate, recover, and get better. Yeah. Uh, and that's what what health and fitness is. Is you know, I mean, it's body building for a reason. You're trying to get get better and, and move forward instead of just beat into the ground over and over. So. And, there are, and there are ways to train without beating the hell out of people. So I'm yeah. not saying don't train. I'm not saying don't exercise. There's a lot of ways. You just got to make sure you're doing, you know, giving people what they need as opposed to giving them what you think, what you want to give them, you know. Every yeah. trainer, any trainer can beat the hell out of somebody. But how do they feel when they walk out of the gym? Are you giving them what they need? Uh, that, that's a big question. So that's, what, that's kind of what I'll leave you with. That's, Hopefully that's, uh, your HRV guy will probably expand on it much better than I can, but. Yeah. But I think that's one we didn't really hit on. But that's when we talk about cortisol and stress and sleep. Training's a, training's a big aspect of that. Yeah. So, Dude, Tom, that is awesome. Um, this has been awesome. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Um, you know, thank you for listening. Make sure if you're on iTunes, give us a review. Let us know your feedback. If you have topics that you want us to cover, um, drop that in the comments. Make sure you check out the website, houseofstrengthgym.com. We'll have this episode on there with show notes so you can see the links to all the resources that we talked about, um, ways to get in touch with Tom and get more from him. So that's it for this one. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.